It's Super Formula 2022 at Fuji. Ready? Let's race at Fuji! Great start from Okio Sasahara, but a better start from third on the grid. What a launch from Rio Harikawa. It's a difficult start to the season for a couple of drivers. Is that the ball sitter? Still stranded on the starting grid. Rio Hirakawa has managed to come through, though, from third position on the grid to take the advantage. And that really caught out Ren Sato. He's lost a few positions as well as they charge through on the first sector. But what a terrible start to the year for Ukyo Sasahara, who has not moved, nor has Nobuharu Matsushita. And there's a couple of cars in trouble. Somebody very slow on the way through the middle sector. I think we've got a puncture. A very dramatic start then, Jamie, and it looks to me as though we still have the pole sitter, Ukyo Sasahara, sat there on the grid. Yeah, nightmare scenario for Sasahara. He just didn't get away. His hand clutches on these cars are very tricky. Ren Sato also got oh, a pole sitter and he just into a spin. That was Otsu, Hiroki Otsu, tagged the back of Sato there. So Sato down to the back of the field. Disaster what? for both of the front row starters. That is an absolute hammer blow for Ren Sato. Nothing he could have done about that at all. He just got nudged there. Tried to correct it on wheel spin, but unfortunately the car was already well around. And there's a couple more incidents as drivers clearly trying to up the ante and use the chaos of the situation to their advantage. Just trying to make up as many places as they can on lap one. But as they come through at the end of the first lap, it is Ryo Hirakawa who leads the way after a cracking start from the front of the grid. Sasha Benestras in B2 from Yui Sekaguchi and Ritomo Miata. Nigeria is five, then Makino, Otsu, Alesi, Yamashita, Yamamoto, and Otsushi Miyaki. Oh, what a start. Fenestraz as well, Sasha Fenestraz from P5 up to P2. We see Atsushi Miyaki is going wide there in the background, but what a great start for Fenestraz up three places. Yuki Sekiguchi up five places on the opening lap. We've got a Toyota 1, 2, 3, 4. So the car that uh, pulled off the circuit with the puncture was Nirai Fukuzumi. You can actually see his car there to the side of the road. So uh, that's three retirements already. Uh, two retirements, because Ukiyo Sasahara did eventually get going again. But certainly for uh, Nirai uh, Fukuzumi, it is game over. Absolutely astonishing battle. Already electrifying. And Ren Sato has already caught up to the two KCMG cars. So that spin has deterred him but it certainly hasn't demotivated him he's only going to keep pushing from here so we'll have to see how much work the young rookie can make guys is still all over the back of it and we need to keep an eye on Fenestras Jamie he was fastest in warm-up this morning and he's definitely going to be a threat as his teammate goes to battle that's Kenta Yamashita battling away there with Hiroki Otsu and he tried to go the long way round. It's still there. He's still alongside. And there's no problem at all to squeeze Otsu to the inside of the left-hander. That's a nice move. Up through the gears, down the straight. Fenestras goes with him. And he's not going to back down. Fenestras will get up alongside him. And he's going to try and squeeze him at the braking zone. He's got him. Sasha Fenestras takes the lead at Fuji. Having had a fantastic start to last year, he won at Fuji, of course, in 2021. He knows how to get the job done here, but this is 2022. Things are much tougher. He's going to have a run at Ritomo Miyata, and he will have a good opportunity, but he's going to need to leave it very late into turn one because he's still quite a way back. And this is where you make the calculated risk. Do you send it up the inside? Miyata clearly feels he's going to be a threat, but he's not going to go for the move. He's a little too far back as they head into the apex. Because he has been a bit of a one lap. Oh, pace. that oh, is Sasahara, Sasahara again. Yep, Sasahara again, uh, and he's got a puncture. He's got a puncture. That's the left rear again. So uh, that looks that looks like he's done worse. that on that looks like he's done it on his own. Let's have a look at it. Yeah, he's locked the car and he's picked up a puncture there. So that's definitely on his own. He's not made contact with anything that we are aware of. Not only for Sasahara, but also for the new Yokohama rear tyre, which was introduced to avoid exactly that kind of scenario. But this is the warmest conditions by far that this tyre is running. So I do wonder if that is having an impact. Snap away in the hands of Sasha and Rio. Here we go. Now, this is going to be a great chance to go for the lead back again. Rio Hirakawa dives to the inside line. There's not a lot of room to mess around with. And he is going to try and lean on Sasha Fenestras into turn one. And Rio Hirakawa takes the lead back again. Brilliant racing between these two. And this could happen a couple of times before the end of this race is done. Sasha Fenestras is looking to come straight back at him and take back the lead, but he can't really make that risk. So Rio Hirakawa holds on to the lead. So even though there was a risk of uh, a safety car with Nido Fukuzumi's car, as into the pits to park it comes Nobuharu Matsushita. 
It isn't a massive surprise considering how tough a race day he has had. He probably just decides, you know what, there's no point exacerbating the car anymore. Bring it in, fix it overnight. As into the pits comes Ritomo Miata. Now, this is the battle for third position. What was. Yeah, you don't see that too often. And you see there's Tomoki Nogiri on the screen, the red car coming up to turn one now. So Nogiri well clear of Miata and probably well clear of Sekiguchi as well. And we've got Tadasuke Makino and the Dandelion car also cruising on by. Um, so on the Tom's front, a Lacey, as we suspected, has been hit with a drive-through penalty. So uh, Miata now is the sole hope of a good result for Tom's in this race. Oh, and that's a big washout there as he came through the left-hander, uh, Miata, on the fresh tyres. So easy to do when you're completely washed out underneath him. So he's got to be very careful how he gets himself back up to speed. And uh, that was a bit of a nasty moment there. So uh, an interesting one as he is being caught fairly rapidly now by the number three car of Kenta Yamashita in the condo racing machine. We know those cars are fast it's as it rode. Now this is going to be interesting to see where he gets out. Uh, go, 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 get on with it. And he is right towards the end of the pit lane as we see the confirmation on screen for Giuliano Alesi getting the drive through penalty. There goes Nojiri. Here's Tadasuke Makino going to get past as well. It's tight, but no. A big lockup though into turn one. That's wasted. The perfect pit stop. And I've got a feeling that Miata is going to sweep by in a moment as well. Oh, all that hard work from the crew. Then he's still trying to get the tyres up to temperature. And now it's stalemate because they're back on with each other again. Yeah, that was the, that was a real shame. Sekiguchi made that mistake there. Um, but I think he was kind of saved by Miata's slow getting away from the pits and slightly uh, slightly um, poor outlap. Uh, so the condo crew go to work. That's a good stop. And Fenestraz isn't particularly spectacular as he leaves the pits, but then you've obviously he's got to deal with the pit lane speed limit as he comes out. Also into the pits there. That is oh, is that OU? Yes, it is. That's uh, to shoot, that's uh, oh, where's Fenestraz going to get out? That is number one. That is Nigeri. So Najiri's early pit stop has made him a race-winning contender. The battle again between Miata and Sekiguchi, and they are having a proper race. Miata came through the last timing beacon in front of Sekiguchi, and now Sekiguchi's got back through again. He runs wide. Sekiguchi is really struggling to keep Miata behind him, and Miata is going to try and make mincemeat of him as they come out of the final turn and onto the main straight. He's going to be in the slipstream without any problems at all. But will he be able to get them into the first corner? And Sekiguchi knows that he's got his back against the ropes here now. Miata will have him in the slipstream. Look, he's trying to break the toe. Dives for the pit wall. No prisoners from Miata. Here he goes. He's going to go diving straight to the inside line. One wheel over the wide line. He tries. He has to bail out of it. And they nearly come together. Great piece of racing there between the two of them. Miata almost, almost out of bounds. There is that white line on that side of the Fuji pit straight, but I think he just about kept his uh, his uh, right-hand wheels within the track, so that would have been legal had he pulled it off. But as it was, he couldn't quite get it done. To get the car round, we've seen several drivers overshoot. This is how it all started. This is Miata in front of Sekiguchi. Has he made this move right round the outside? No way. Yes, he has. Look at that. What an overtake. Tires. He may have to compromise track position here. But let's have a look and see what happens because obviously he's going to be on pressure tires to the end. Najiri's got it's going to be close. Najiri needs to commit round the outside. He's going to get it. Najiri takes the lead and he runs wide to try and make sure he's got space. So, so this is uh, Ritomo Miata now going to battle with Tadasuke Makino. And Makino is going to be a sitting target here. Now the straight return of Miata, he's going to make light work of him. No major problems and concerns there. Makino lets him go there. I think he felt, well, there's not a lot of point ruining my tyres. I can just sit be sitting behind him and do the same to him. It's, it does look as though they need as much track time out there to understand the car as they can get. And on the inside, that is a beautiful move from one of the Nakajima cars. Now, who is that battling away? I think that's uh, Oyu, is it, battling away? Uh, yeah, oh, no, sorry, against, uh, Yamamoto. Yeah. Did you not yeah, made things easy for Najiri to pull clear? And look at the distance in the gap. 2.4, 1.4, now six tenths of a second. Hirokawa definitely has the faster car on fresh tyres. So Najiri is a sitting target. Yeah, 
but that's uh, that's a real demonstration of just what a difference having new tyres makes a second a lap uh, up to. And uh, considering now, if this was last year, you'd say Nigeria with the with the Honda engine would be able to stay ahead. But now the Toyota engine has clawed back that uh, advantage from last year. I think here. Kawa's got every opportunity to make a, a bid for the lead of this race. And what a smile this is going to put on the face of Hoshino-san if his man can come through and get the lead on this lap because then they will only have 11 laps to run, uh, 12 laps to run, my apologies. And that is going to be a perfect run to the flag for Rio Hirakawa. Here he goes, lines up to Maki Nojiri. There's not a lot that Nojiri is going to be able to do about this one, except to try and fend him off. But he's a racing driver, and he is the reigning champion, so he'll do everything in his power to keep Rio Hirakawa back, side by side. There's not a lot between them. And Nojiri is going to hold on to the lead, but Hirakawa will try and get him on the switch through, trying to come alongside again. They are side by side, and Nojiri is going to try and hold it. They nearly bang wheels. Hirakawa trying to go the long way round. He has to back out of it. To Moki Nojiri and Ryo Hirakawa having a fantastic scrap in the first race of the season. Hirakawa will now come back at Nojiri again. Going through the right-hander, down to the hairpin. Not an overtaking spot traditionally that you want to take a big gamble on. Rio Hirakawa will now try again. He's going to have the slipstream run again. This is his next big opportunity to go for an overtake. Down the hill, Najiri defends the inside line. Hirakawa might try the same move we saw earlier on from Sikiguchi, but no, he's not able to move to cover it. What a great battle on acceleration. He's going to get alongside again. Round to the left side. There's not a lot of room to play with, and he's going to carry the base round the outside. What a move. Brilliant from Rio Hirakawa. He takes the lead. What a battle. And that he sends Hirakawa to the left side. That's what you need to do in that situation. He gets a tiny bit later on the brakes. He knows he's going to have to get back across the line to cover it. He hasn't quite managed that, but he has got the next left-hander. Look how close they came to contact. It's fantastic from both of them, isn't it? I think Nojiri deserves a lot of credit for holding uh, Hirakawa back as long as he did, considering Hirakawa's pace advantage. Very good point. This is where the big move was made, though. I'm so glad we're following this for the entirety of its duration because you really do get to see two masters at their craft. Now, watch Hirakawa. He's got to go left because he can't. Just masterful. Just masterful. True magic. True magic from the drivers in position. That was absolutely stunning stuff. Uh, great to see. Oh, a big slide there as we watch the battle for position from the number three car. That's Kenti Kamashita having his uh, very close battle there with, that's got to be one of the uh, BMAX cars, isn't it? That he's dueling away with there. Trying to lap it, I think. Oh no, sorry, that is Shotsupoi having made his pit stop. He's absolutely paramount. I think that team of racing just missing a little bit of that at the moment. And this is Ren Sato making his bid to get past his teammate. And he gets there in quick succession with each other. So now this is going to be about Ren Sato. He's going to make the lunge into the final turn. Comes from a long way back to do so. But he sensed the opportunity. He's going to get a little bit loose on the exit. And now they're going to be in a drag race to turn one. Kenta Yamashita on the inside by the pit wall. Ren Sato on the outside by the grandstand. There's not going to be a lot to choose between these two. They're going to go all the way down the main straight, side by side. Sato slots back in briefly, but can he be the latest of the late breakers? Down the outside. Watch out for Miyaki. He might get past both of them. Sato still carries it around the outside. He'll have the inside line for the next left-hander. Break. No, he has to bail out. Brilliant racing. Yeah, whether it's for the win or whether it's for the last two points paying position, it's these are drivers. They're always going for it. Chance to race in Super Formula this year, but I think uh, he's definitely proving that he was a good pick for that second seat alongside Sato. Let's just have a look at their pace in the last few laps. Uh, Norgiri on a 24-1, but Fenestrade's on a 23-9, so Fenestrade does have a little bit of an edge. But again, Fenestrade's so on the main early. Straight. Oyo and Subai on the main straight. Sorry to cut across you, Jamie, but Oyo and Subai having a terrific battle for seventh position. And, and Subai is coming straight back at uh, Toshiki Oyu. Euphorically and emphatically, it is a win in race one of the season for Rio Hirakawa and the whole Team Impulse squad.
What a way to start the year. Tomokin Ichijiri does hang on to second in front of Sasha Fenestraz. It's Impul, Mugen and Kondo on the podium. So the sharp end of the grid uh, for tomorrow's uh, second round of the championship. A very, very happy man indeed. Ryo Hirakawa kicks off 2022 in victorious fashion and deservedly so. There's the standings. Hirakawa is six ahead of Najiri and a further four ahead of Sasha Fenestras.